welcome to the GTEC Community Stadium. Everyone loves a good stadium tour and earlier on today we took a look at the beautiful Craven Cottage. Naturally, most people would probably look to go to Chelsea and tour Stamford Bridge after Fulham, but no, I'm a little bit different. I've come to check out the GTEC Community Stadium, the home of course to Brentford Football Club. Now I've just been to Griffin Park, Brentford's old stadium and what's left of it. The sad remains of Griffin Park, there's not a lot there, but today I'm very much keen to check out their new home and see exactly what Brentford have got to offer. So as with Fulham earlier on, I bought something from the club shop. This season we're visiting all 20 Premier League stadiums. This will be the 12th and this stadium's going to be no different. We're going to head over to the Bees Superstore over in the distance, not this little match day shop. And we're going to have to buy something from the club shop. But obviously before we do, we've got a stadium tour booked and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's such a contrast to Craven Cottage. We've gone from the traditional classic Craven Cottage to a new facility that was used for the women's world uh, women's Euro should I say in 2022 it's uh, quite an upgrade well especially now to Griffin Park very little was left of the current Griffin Park after that video remember after this video should I say check out that video so I suppose this is officially called the Brentford Community Stadium but for sponsorship reasons it's the GTEC Community Stadium and they've been here since 2020 just uh, as lockdown hit. The capacity for this stadium, I believe, is 17,500. Let me just check my notes. No, 17,250. The record attendance came here a couple of months ago against Arsenal. Again, as I looked at my notes, 17,201 against Arsenal a couple of months ago. That's a record attendance. And yeah, it was basically a plan to regenerate the area. Um, a lot of Brentford has been redeveloped. I think the high street's just down there and they've got a lot of new stuff going on, a lot of new shops and restaurants and so on. It seems to be the case with a lot of London. We found that again with the West Ham, uh, the old Upton Park site. A lot's changed over there. Loads and loads of flats and housing and stuff in and around the ground. Seems to again be a common theme. No football fan likes. Uh, old football stadiums being replaced with flats and apartments, but they can do what they like to a new site. So this, uh, this is pretty standard looking in and around the ground these days. Long gone are the terraced housing that we saw in and around Griffin Park and Fulham. Obviously those terraced houses were a little bit different than your standard ones around football clubs. Let's go and find out where reception is. Let's check in, double check that the time is 3.30 in the afternoon. That's when the tour begins. So we need to go in entrance C, that's where reception is I believe and that's where the tour will begin. If you have seen the Griffin Park wander around, the exploration, I did speak not on camera to a woman who lives basically in the flats behind what was the Griffin Park Football Stadium, uh, football ground, hate the word stadium ground. Now I think they should have done some scheme whereby those people in the flats or the houses, the terrace housing around the ground who had close connections to the club, I reckon they should have been offered one of these lovely apartments at a discount rate maybe a, a house swap of some kind obviously that's not going to happen because uh they're making pure profit around here that would have been nice wouldn't it okay so embarrassingly i've got to admit that the first time i came across brentford in depth was i used to be a massive fan of the football blooper videos like nick hancock's football nightmares danny baker's own goals and gaffes and bradley walsh had one in the mid-2000s called soccer shockers where he was based at where we've just been griffin park now that got me googling if they, even even if that was a thing maybe ask jeeves back in the mid-2000s and i've kind of become quite intrigued with brentford ever since every time i'd watch the chase and see bradley or on coronation street or whatever whatever i would think i would think of brentford now i have seen brentford play this season i uh don't dislike the video for this but um i've got to admit 
I was somewhat of a Glory fan as a kid, uh, mainly because I idolised Beckham and my dad's a Man United fan. I followed Hereford United as well, but I was at Old Trafford earlier on when basically we stole a win off you. Uh, Scott McTominay with a double in the dying minutes of injury time. You were winning 1-0, Brentford were winning 1-0. I was right next to the Brentford fans and I've got to say, out of all the games I've seen this season, and we've seen quite a few, the Brentford fans were probably one of the best group of away fans loud as anything my mum's a Villa fan and saw him play uh, play Brentford over this season or last and she said the same thing at Villa Park really loud a really good fan base we had some great banter back and forth the, the video is on the channel um, so I've got to give a shout out to the Brentford fans really good fans and when they lost you know they held their hands up and said you know they're unlucky and we were lucky and that, that was the truth basically people like me do these uh, stadium tours on YouTube we always show you the media entrance no one really cares but one thing we can take from the media entrance is something I've taken from my first impressions in general of this stadium is the fact that it actually looks nothing like a standard football stadium it looks more like a community centre a leisure centre community centre it's, it's a community stadium of course it looks like a bloody community centre it's very different from how Brentford fans would probably remember Griffin Park now we're going to do a bit of a 360 off the ground. So yeah, it was built in 2020. This stadium cost 71 million to build. It's not that expensive for, for a modern day stadium. And the very first game to be played in here was September in 2020. And that was against Oxford in a friendly in which they drew 2-2. So quite an anticlimactic debut game here at the GTEC. So as with most football stadiums, new and old, they tend to be situated right on a railway line, right next to a railway track. Old Trafford's the same, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass for Manchester United because they can't extend the Sir Bobby Charlton stand because of that bloody train track. Birmingham City, we went there. They've got a train track along St Andrews, and uh, Brentford's no different. There's going to be no need to extend this part of the stand or the stadium over the train track, I wouldn't have thought. Even though it is, again, what was it, 17,250, so it's not the biggest of stadiums. I think it's the third, is it the third smallest in the Premier League? I think now Bournemouth's bottom, because Luton extended, and then Luton, or is it second bottom? I don't know. I think Luton might even be up to 18,000. Let me know in the comments below. More branding, again, not your typical look of a football stadium. But ladies and gents, as I said earlier, we've got to go to the club's shop. So as I'm doing this 360 around the ground, I'm going to keep an eye out for the shop, which I think as we made our way in, you've got here the community stadium hub. Uh, I think this is like an NHS centre. So the community tag isn't just a way in which Brentford are endearing themselves to the community. They very much are a part of the community. They vote like, we've just been to Griffin Park and it was only like a three minute drive. It was literally down like a straight road really close to the town so it's not like they've moved out of town and done a bit of a West Ham who moved to like where the Westfield shopping centre is and the Olympic Park and stuff it's quite different so I have no idea where I am but I know I'm where the away fans would go because this is the away ticket collections so as we wander under this stand this side of the stadium again Brentford fans let us know where we are I thought I'd let you know that the tour cost me 20 great British pounds and as of filming this as of booking it in January of 2024 they only did stadium tours on a Wednesday which works out well for me because it's my day off on the milk round so if you are to come to West London is it near Chelsea and Fulham and stuff I thoroughly suggest you check this place out because no one really does tours or on YouTube anyway of Brentford maybe there's a reason why maybe it's gonna be a crap tour but I'm very much looking forward to this so I can see it right in the distance, right in front of me. So I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Brentford is recognising those supporters who bought shares and bricks in the club when the club was struggling. It almost ceased to exist. Like so many English football clubs. Me speaking personally as someone from Hereford. Hereford United went out of business in 2014. Currently uh, reset at the Phoenix Club of Hereford FC. So I know what it's like to lose a local football club. You've got all the names of those people that supported the club during hard times. I wonder if Bradley, Rol Bradley Walsh's name's on there. I would have thought so. Seems like a good guy. Yeah, back to... Oh, hang on. Hang on. From day one of 2020. Right, 
more names. Everything is so organized. There's like nothing. It's very clean. I said it's quite it's a little bit boring around the outside. I'll be honest with you. There's not a lot going on. Reason being is because it, again, it's so organized. A bin store. It's been labeled. Make sure you put your rubbish in those bins in there, guys. But what I do like is when you do get these new stadiums, a lot of people complain that they kind of lose a piece of their DNA. The clubs kind of lose a piece of their heritage when they move into these new stadiums. The look of this stadium is very different from a lot of the typical bowl stadiums that are built like Leicester, Derby, uh, Southampton, those sort of stadiums that were all built in the early 2000s. And I like the fact that they tried personalizing it with certain branding, with names and stuff. I love the way a lot of uh, grounds, especially new stadiums, they have like little fan areas, fan zones. Not Brentford. They've got a fan hive in fitting with them as the bees. Kind of like a tent and stuff. I'm guessing that's where, I don't know. I thought that's where people had a drink and stuff. I was gonna say the shop doesn't look open, but yes, it does. There's the entrance. Let's go and have a look. Right, so as with most club shops, they don't normally let you film. They were nice people, but it's a weird policy most Premier League clubs have, so you can't film. But uh, we bought we bought the eagle, the male eagle, at the Crystal Palace store a couple of weeks ago. I think he was called Pete. Pete and Alice are their mascots. This is a bit more obvious. We've got Buzz, and his missus is called Buzzette. Buzz and Buzzette, they walk around the pitch, apparently, uh, prior to the game. Most clubs have a mascot, don't they? Man United have Fred the Red. So that's our purchase for Brentford. At the end of the season, we're gonna get every single item we bought from all 20 Premier League stadiums. And we're gonna do a video on those items. So stay tuned for that one. Make sure you are subscribed, guys. And I think it's best now just to head back over to reception and do the tour. I'll see you inside the GTEC Community Stadium. I don't know. Love that. Let's get the ballroom. Welcome to the ballroom now, yeah. <laughs> Nice, yeah. It's just like a hospitality area, is it? This is one of them,
Right, so this is obviously where the post-match briefings take place. You've got the written media here, and if on that raised platform you might have television cameras. So this is the away dressing room, is it? Yep. This is too nice to be an away dressing room. <laughs> Just away, not home, yeah? Away. Take a seat. Way too nice. familiar with their surroundings and then they go in there and they come out it's all fucking changed. Oh sorry, it's all changed. <laughs> <laughs> Forest room for a treat, 20th of January. Oh uh. stop. <laughs> oh, Right, what a fantastic tour. I mean, I must admit, I didn't know too much about Brentford uh, coming here today. As I said, my, my earliest memories were Bradley Walsh, you know, <laughs> my knowledge is limited. It, a shame it wasn't quite dark, so I didn't get to see or get on camera the view from the pitch too well. Hopefully it came out all right on camera. But I did make a few mistakes earlier on. I did say that it cost about 71,000, uh, 71 million, sorry, should I say, 71 million to build this place but the guy Jeremy did say it was north of 100 million but the project there is a lot he did say about the project which I'm going to tell you now obviously 17,250 in terms of capacity the reason they didn't have more seats was because they were limited with the land they had they, they had to build the new stadium here um, obviously it's a community kind of council project whereby all those apartments that we saw in and around the ground actually helped pay for the development of this stadium so they are highly critical highly critical highly important to the building of the GTEC. now when they left griffin park things were a little bit different for brentford i'd mentioned in the fulham video that obviously fulham were playing hereford back in the mid 90s and stuff but also so were brighton obviously i went to the game here for brighton in 97 some of these teams that were really struggling like 20 30 years ago have really 
done well. They've, they've basically got a new lease of life. They've been reborn. I didn't quite know how close Brentford were to going under. You know, the guide had mentioned times at Griffin Park when the average attendance was like 4,000, uh, with like 2,000 in terms of season tickets, whereas now obviously 17,250 in terms of capacity, but they've got about 11,000 of season ticket holders. So as I said, it's very much a community stadium, hence the name, and the council very much wanted Brentford to have their stadium here. They had uh, spoke about possibly moving towards Heathrow, uh, moving out of the borough, and obviously the council didn't want that. But naturally, that comes with some uh, neighbourhoods, you know, uh, residents in and around this area, somewhat objecting to the building of this stadium. Some of the excuses were, were stupid. I mean, a resident said that the, the noise from the fans, the floodlights, would cause their plants to die random but most people were on board and as i said it's only down the road from griffin park so we can be a little bit critical and say new grounds are quite generic this one to me the way it looks is different you know there's sharp edges in the corners uh, did you see as well in two of the corners there were the old school looking floodlights we saw in reception they had the old floodlights made into tables and you can buy those but it is refreshing, even though there are floodlights built into the stand, it is refreshing to see old school looking floodlights that appear, appear in the corners above the actual stands themselves. Apparently there is room for a few more seats to increase the capacity here, but as Jeremy said on the tour, I know obviously you'll make a bit more money from doing that, but in terms of like, if you compare the increased revenue from a few thousand extra seats compared to the revenue they get yearly from being in the Premier League, it's minimal. So it's vital that that money probably is more importantly spent on the team and staying in the Premier League because the TV rights essentially um, is like winning the lottery for football clubs. When they get promoted from the Championship to the Premier League, it's incredible in terms of the, the financial development that can help with uh, in building a football club. Ladies and gents, it is getting dark, so I'm gonna make my way to the car. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Tap that like button and don't forget to check out the previous video where we had a little walk around Griffin Park and also the Fulham tour as well. You've got Griffin Park over here in the left and then we have a football ground tours there. I'll see you in the next video.